glory. Like that's a, that's a religious word, so it needs a little unpacking for us to appreciate and understand it. Isaiah says that the glory of the Lord fills the earth. All creation is filled with the glory of the Lord. So when you're trying to understand what is the glory of God, okay, it is the sun. It is the open ocean. It is thunderstorms, right? It is the beauty and the power of God as we see in creation. And then here's a fun one. In John, he tells a story about the wedding at Cana. You might recall the story, Jesus, his mom, his friends go to this wedding. Folks run out of wine. It's terribly embarrassing. Mary asked Jesus if he could do something about it. Jesus has the servants fill six stone jars with water. And then John makes the point, 30 gallons each. Okay, so 180 gallons of water. And then Jesus turns it into sumptuous wine. So Jesus kicks 180 gallons of wine into the party at the end of the evening. And then John says this. It says, he thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their trust in him. So what did Jesus reveal? He revealed the power of God, the generosity of God, the ability of God to take something ordinary like water and turn it into the extraordinary. This is what he does in our humanity. And then in uh, Romans chapter 6, Paul says that it was by the glory of God that Jesus was raised from the dead. So you think of the sun, you think of the ocean, you think of Cana, water into wine, you think of the resurrection, you think of Easter morning. That's the glory of God. It is his splendor. It is his power. It is his generosity. It is his goodness. That's what filled the tabernacle the temple, and that's what now fills the human heart. And I think it is something that we ask for. We are meant to be filled with the glory of God. I don't know that most people know this. You are meant to be filled with the glory of God. 